Welcome to episode nine of DIY IT for SMB. We're talking about IT governance today. We'll go around the room and we'll introduce ourselves and I'll start to my right here. Hi. Hi. I'm Adam. Good to see you, Adam. I'm Nate. Nate, good to see you. I'm Austin. Austin. Yeah. Nice to see you too. All right. I thought, I, I thought I'd mix it up a little bit today. Yeah. Just give me your first name. Thanks. No problem. Ruined my entire script. Hey, <laughs> we're here. We're glad to be with you guys. So um, I'm Jason Knoll, Vice President here at MIS Solutions. So today we're going to talk about IT governance, or governance. I should actually pronunciate it really well, but yep. yeah. Um, to talk about kind of what it is, how we enforce it, the things that we do to make sure that we're governing our clients and our data and the different stuff that we do from a security standpoint. So, well, I mean, hopefully a lot of the folks sort of have watched the first eight episodes. If they have a lot of this stuff, it culminates in what this is, what we're going to talk about today. It's right. So peace, thanks peace, for coming. Peace, peace, peace. We're done. It was great talking to you yeah, guys. I yeah. Mean, just watch the first eight. Eight and, and you're good. Put it all together. Right. And that's come back for nine. 10 because 10 is going to be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> 10 helps you save money, so you'll want to come back for yeah, that. Yeah, that's one. true. No, I, I agree with that. I mean, we have talked about IT governance coming to this to this point. Mm -hmm. Everything that is built on in the last eight episodes has somehow touched on this subject. Yep. Um, I mean, one of the big things we can talk about is just computer auditing, right? Um, we have some tools that do auditing on IT systems for us so that we can maintain different security levels, different requirements, if it's a HIPAA, PCI, different compliance areas like that. I know, Dones, you work on you work heavily on this. Mm -hmm. I know you have some spreadsheets that have lots and lots of colors and <laughs> lots like of- green. Yeah, lots of like, you know, government standards in them, FBI standards and different things that you've accumulated over the years to kind of make sure that our clients are, our partners are following into these. Yep. Yeah, a lot of compliance, uh, you know, a lot of different categories, a lot of things that I, you know, came up with myself over the years that I determined to be best practice just based on things in the industry, um, even, yeah, culminating the different things like, um, like one of the things you just talked about, the FBI just came out with new um, compliance standards for security to prevent like ransomware. Um, they just updated their policies and procedures there. Yeah, I mean, the, the I mean, I, I, I manually go in through and check a lot of things, but we also, like you talked about, have tools that, that automate those things as well. Mm -hmm. and so we, we check those things, uh, myself and the other team members check those things uh, monthly or so. Um, if not, you know, every time you get it, we get into your environment, right. really. Yeah, auto automation's only good if it's working. Yeah. You know, like, like we kind of talked about earlier in a different conversation yep. today, it's like automation's great, but someone still has to check it every once in a while yeah. and make sure it's plugging away. 100%. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I, I mean, and my goal has always been, you know, like I said, to check it every time we're looking at something, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm already logged in. What the heck? Right. I mean, you look around, you make sure you double check, triple check, check your own work, somebody else's work. Um, make sure everything looks looks good. Yeah, I mean, we talk about those three, uh, kind of, we didn't talk about it yet, but three pillars of it coming together to give us this governance, security, IT risk management, and then computer auditing or, you know, system auditing, bringing those together to form this piece to make sure that we're secure. Yep. You know, we're doing the things that we need to do. Um, we're making sure our partners are safe and they're able to do their business. You know, without their buy-in of this, sometimes it makes things difficult. But at the same time, we're there to help protect them. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, be able to drive their business and make money, right? Right. I mean, that's what we're all in the business for. I mean, unless someone's a nonprofit, maybe, but they still have a end goal, which is maybe take care of somebody, however they're doing their nonprofit. So, I love I love looking at your, your what you guys do and how you're continuing changing because I know as soon as you write it down, there's a new standard that comes out tomorrow right. and it's changed again. Then you guys, it's like. You know, your sheets all of a sudden are green and you take the weekend off and you come back and now there's like three new categories and things are red again or, you know, yellow for caution or whatever you want to look at it. Yep. And it's just constant. So what from, can... from Nate's side, too, I mean, he's he's been, you know, the, or the VCO department's been also been instrumental in working with our partners um, and trying to help get some of this finalized into the finish line to, to get as much green as we can because without their buy-in and unfortunately that happens a lot you don't get the buy-in they don't take it as serious as as you want to and there's a fine line you can you know put the 
gates of hell up on them and that scares them, but yeah. there's got to be a happy medium. And I, you know, I think that your department over there is done Actually good. sitting down with somebody and have a conversation yep. too versus an the, email an where email they're like, this and, is glibbity blop, you know? Yeah. You having a meeting about a bunch of other things yep. that also go into the risk management type stuff and making sure assets are updated and that kind of stuff goes into hand in hand with that as well. Yep. Yeah. Having newer hardware, newer equipment too. Whether, you know, the firewalls have, you know, the right kind of next generation security in them. It's not something old or consumer mm -hmm. grade. Uh, obviously, we, we find in businesses a lot, there's con what we consider consumer grade equipment. It does not have the bells and whistles that we want to see from a security standpoint. Right. They're not able to run like umbrella. They're not allowed, they're not able to do inline, you know, packet sniffing and different stuff like that. Doesn't tell us if there's new firmware. Right. Uh, yeah. Tell, yeah. Yeah, and it doesn't, I mean, and that goes back to the automation too and being able to have something that's automated to pull down patches, to yep. pull down the right things. And so, yeah, you know, businesses, lots of times I'm sure, Nate, it's probably difficult when we bring in a new partner who may have consumer-grade equipment for them to understand why. And that, right. I mean, what does that conversation usually look like for you guys? Sometimes it's, it's a, a lot of yelling. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it's a good conversation you know they'll be receptive to your ideas and want to make the best changes that they can for their organization and then other times they can't really see it they're like you know my business has functioned just fine the way yeah. that it is why do I need to change that's the harder conversation there right it works today it works today why should I why should I change it until you show them the firewall logs and right. someone's been in their network for months <laughs> and it like owns out yeah. their data and then they're like oh yeah I didn't know that my my son put in my router for me and mm -hmm. he put on this you know you know or the or the other open source thing piece of it is uh, they don't. They don't care about me. They're, right. They're never. Gonna, I'm never going to be one of those people. But they do care about you, and that, that comes, <laughs> yes, that's, that's interesting. You say that because maybe at one point in time not, yep. but since everybody has cyber insurance now, right? Mm -hmm. They don't care who you are because they're just hoping that your your cyber insurance is going to pay pay out, right? Yep. That you're going to file a claim. Yep. And that and they're going to get their money. It could be ten grand. It could be twenty grand. It could be three million dollars. It just depends on the size. But every every organization, I think today, is a target because you, you're insured. You know whether they have cyber insurance or not. Correct. And most places we come across do. Um, lots of them. Uh, one of the we've talked about this in the last eight episodes too is that, you know, lots of times, cyber insurance is now driving these standards for us. Mm -hmm. They're doing audits finally. They're trying to make sure equipment's up to date. They're wanting enterprise. You know, great which is equipment. helpful when we go to talk to the partner as well because we can say, you know, your cyber insurance is requiring this. Do you want to commit fraud or not? Right. <laughs> or do you want your premiums to triple or yes, quadruple? I mean, we've seen premiums go from oh, it's a thousand dollars a year to now it's ten. Yep. And nobody wants that. Okay, mm -hmm. I can spend a thousand dollars on a good firewall. And then be compliant now, still, it's a $9,000 savings, right? right. Or $8,000 savings once you pay the premium. And they're able to then check that box and say, yes, I have mm -hmm. two-factor this. And you now, uh, funny is, we talked about this. We just recently had a partner that we were talking to. And, you know, with another IT firm, they try to enable two-factor, right? And it, right here, it comes back down to the business need and is the business able to run? Well, they weren't, mm -hmm. right? They need, they have the need for it. They need it, right? But however it was set up, they were giving like scenarios that they were being prompted every 30 minutes for yeah, two wild. factor. Then it was, it was so in the way. They're like, we can't do this. We can't work. And I mean, they turned it off. Yep. So we went from, you know, having at least something to now there's nothing again, which is kind of scary. It makes me worried that how many times it, or what's going on. I mean, but if we look at their Office 365 logs, you could just probably see user accounts being just hammered on as somebody's trying to break into them. Eventually, it's going to happen. Obviously, two-factor is coming again. It's coming in a way that I know, Dones, you've rolled out two-factor for clients like crazy. Yeah. <clears throat> I, mean, I mean, everything's evolving and advancing, like you said. So, I mean, these days, best practice is not to use, you know, less secure methods of two-factor authentication. So, I mean, we've pushed in the past just for any two-factor because... 
you know, that was something. You know, that's something. <laughs> the start, right? right? But these days, I mean, SMS is the least secure method of, of two factor. So that'll be a next step that we we implement or try to get implemented is to, to remove that that as a factor because, I mean, if you and say SMS, it, you mean text messaging, right? Right. right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I mean, you're these, not, these you're, acronyms are hard for me. Yeah, you're not <laughs> your your uh, your cell phone number, your cell phone can be can be spoofed fairly easily. Um, same thing with like a phone call. If you get a phone call to your office phone, something like that, yeah. uh, it's easily uh, in, you know taken in the middle of its process and right. manipulated. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, like I said, it's always advancing. You know, the best practice, even for that, over the last few years, is to get like a dedicated app. Yeah. Like a Microsoft Authenticator app, Duo, Duo app, Authy, anything like that. Um, but even one step further than from that these days, uh, Microsoft and you know NIST and FBI have been recommending um, either passwordless authentication, which would be a, a great thing for everyone. I think you don't have to remember your password at all anymore. I mean, like biometric stuff. Biometrics, yeah, mm-hmm. face scans, um, you know, fingerprints, that kind of thing, um, or phishing resistant. Mm. MFA, which is things like carrying a uh, security FIDO key with you, so you could buy like a twenty dollar key and have it on your right. your actual key, physical keys, and use that as like your digital key. You plug it into your laptop, or you tap it on it, or something, and you know that's a way to not be be, be hacked, or fished, that kind mm. of thing, because it has to be on you, right? Um, other methods include um, things like. Like I talked about, like like more biometric authentication. One one is like a Windows called Windows um, Hello for Business. Yep. Um, and then another thing is like it's called certificate authentication. So that's provided by either us or your business, and it, and it verifies you are who you are. So you know, things we might get to eventually, but um, it's really like we talked about. It all comes down to what's best for your business and the time. Um, you know what isn't going to impede your workers as much as possible, but it's also going to provide you with the security level that you need. We've done a lot of that too, to try to make it as convenient as possible for Mm -hmm. the end user. Kind of like you were talking about with this one partner, you know, we would obviously want to do it for them that they're in the most secure way possible, but to where it's not impacting the end user from being able to perform their function. Like I I said, these are all evolutions of things that have have come in the past and have have come, you know, like if you just think about this in the way of of passwords, right? It used to be, hey, whatever you wanted. Yeah, it didn't didn't matter. Um, You can make it your name, you can make it password, whatever. Hopefully those days have come and gone. Um, So they're requiring longer passwords um, or, you know, more complexity, you know, whatever it is. you know, it just it's an evolution of those kinds of things. So I should change my password from Nate is cool one two three. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe it's good because nobody really thinks that. <laughs> maybe it's true. It's, I, true. it's interesting you say all these different methods for authentication, and I don't even really think about it because you know you pick up your phone and it unlocks for you, and it's unlocking because of my face, <clears throat> my my Poor uh, thing. I know <laughs> my my obviously my MacBook um, Air has fingerprint, and I love that. Or my watch. Yeah. I, I love sitting down on my computer and my screen just unlocks and then I am like, how did it do that? And I realized that my watch unlocked it. And I love that because it's something I have. Mm-hmm. And it's been authenticated too because I have a passcode on it. So, you know, you can't just put my watch on um, and and be able to get into my computer. So all these things are being unlocked in one way or another. It's it's just kind of neat that we're moving to that. I'm glad to see that. I, mean, I that, know it's inconvenient. That is the future. It has been the future yeah. for the last five years or something it doesn't want it actually gets implemented it's coming slowly oh yeah um but it's that's going to be everything there's not going to be passwords well, yeah, there's not going to be a choice and that's anymore. It, it and it's explaining it in a nice way to the end users that hey you you're not even thinking of it but you've been using two-factor for some of your stuff mm-hmm. a lot longer than you know yep I mean, you have to put in your zip code at the gas, gas station. pump correct I mean, like, yeah. same thing. or just even a pin on an atm card right. that's right. two-factor right. physical Something you know and something you have, right? And it doesn't have so. to be hugely painful. I mean, it really, it really doesn't. These methods can be implemented in a way that really doesn't impede your business or right. you know, in your individual. You know, it's not hugely annoying. I mean, it's managing the risk, right? Yes. In the end, you know, so that you know, it's not so much that's crushing my business, but I'm managing the risk that I'm not as 
big of a target as somebody else who doesn't have it now, right? So somebody tries to hack into my account, well, I have two-factor, they're gonna move on, right? They're gonna go to the next business and they're not gonna have two-factor and they're gonna get in, they're gonna leave me alone. And so I, that's, that's always that risk management for us is, you know, making sure that when somebody does, first knocks on the door and they try it, it's locked. It's like, all right, moving on to the moving next Moving on to the next one, yeah. That thing makes me think of the stormtroopers and most Eisley knocking on the doors and it's locked and moving on, you know, <laughs> looking for Luke. But it's... Star Wars! <laughs> but yeah, I mean, so it's that, always that risk management. So from a computer standpoint with computer auditing, can you guys tell me how we're doing that? What maybe, you don't have to mention tools. You could talk about the tools and stuff. How does that work for us? I mean, is that something that's happening every minute of every day i mean auditing happens in a lot of different ways right we talked about a few before i mean there's manual automation that i and other people do um there's automated automation and um you know those those takes many forms so we have a lot of solutions that that audit have logs you know those things are, are automatically generated and um, kept for a certain number of days Sometimes it's by what we say, depending on how far we want to go back and check things. Um, so, you know, and are these logs like being sent to you guys in a lot of cases and you're reviewing them? Sometimes it depends on, you know, what we're looking for in the product. Um, you know, sometimes, you know, the logs are generated and kept a certain number of days, like I said. And if there's something that flags, you know, a certain event in those logs that are flagged, it gets sent directly to us. Um, other times they're just sitting there in case we want to go back and check you know, certain events, certain things that happen. You're looking for something specific. You right. can go back and... Yeah, I can imagine how many logs you guys are looking at. So <laughs> it's good that we probably have automation tools. I mean, you think about firewall logs, you're looking at PC logs, server logs, and being able to scrape those and pull them back to a point to have reports to generate and looking for, you know, the red flags, right? Right. I mean, there, there are obviously certain events that we would want to be notified of right away. Yeah. Um, there you are like other... a siren on your car when that happens. And you <laughs> throw it up there. Yeah. You go rushing over and fix it. Yeah, it's like the bat phone. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, and then there's other events that are just informational, right? That will be may be useful later. Yep. I mean, you know, something we don't want to get a 32 emails about. Yeah, so. it's an alert. It's just not a critical alert. Right. Well, maybe we want to go back and see, you know, if the server was off, turned off to reboot at some time. We don't need to know every time the server reboots because that happens. Uh, it's on. Those things are automated it's for updates and things. We mm -hmm. don't need to know when that happens every time. Um, but yeah, I mean, like I said, you know, in that scenario, there's there's times when we would check those logs you know, manually. Sometimes they're automated. That happens in a lot of different places, um, not just for that, but um, you know, for if you go to look at certain security events and things, like we have we talked about earlier about the software we have that goes through and monitors compliance and those kinds of things. Um, there are goals and bullet points of things that we want to make sure are happening. Um, and so, you know, those, those reports are done, like I said, maybe monthly, maybe more so. Um, and, you know, sometimes we'll be alerted of things there that need to be fixed. Um, other times, again, it's just manual of just me or someone else checking those things as we see them every day or, yeah. or when we have time, you know, on a monthly basis or something going through and running through, um, you know, a, a, a procedure sheet of things that we think we know should be turned on or, you know, should be looked at. And we're just continually doing those things or recommending, you know, greater security in times where that's appropriate for the client or whatever. Do you find existing partners are harder to get to do that or do you find new partners maybe are more open to uh, having that kind of stuff yeah. done and working? Everything with them? is situational. It is. Yeah. <laughs> so, depends on the person. Yeah, yeah. It always depends on the person. And if you're just, we're just talking generalized. Probably the uh, the person who's been with us a while and is already used to a certain standard is harder to break it. Uh, it's hard, yes, it's harder to explain those sort of things. Um, maybe it's not because they understand and they how, trust us because they've yeah. been with us for a long yeah, time. And they right? understand how fast the industry moves. Yeah. So. The industry is definitely moving fast. I think about like the, the, the what we call our tool sets and our stacks, right? I mean, we only use this much of products out there, right? I mean, there's just hundreds of products. Mm -hmm. And then I think about what the what, what it takes for you guys to look at logs, look at reports. And I'm like, oh, it's probably easy. And then I'm like starting to dive down. I'm like, wow, you could just spend a day in one of our products 
just looking at security information, assessing risk management, tweaking things, and then the next day go somewhere else and do Certainly, something else and 100%. never really. You could just spend days just. And by the time you're done, you're back to the first. Yeah. Platform. Yeah. yeah so. And I do that. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Our partners just know that we're bored. For, yeah. For your benefit. No, yeah. it's just gotten way more complex. Um, but the information is even better than it was in the past. And having a lot of the automation, a lot of the risk risk assessments, and the audits going on is a good thing. Just like you know having. We used to use antivirus, which we still do, right? But running the next generation MDRs, um, constantly tweaking things, having firewalls we've talked about in the past, the next gen, where when you click on a link, the firewall is verifying that link from your desk now for you. So it's got inline ability to just watch what's going on, email, making sure that it's capturing stuff and mm -hmm. making thing, making sure things are clean before it even gets to you. And there's so many layers of our security that we put in place and then stuff still gets through which has always amazes me it's like as soon as we shift to block something somebody finds a new way around it so i mean security is always how high do you want to build the wall right right, right. you know you can always make a ladder that's higher than the mm -hmm. wall but how much do you want someone to, how many hoops do you want someone yeah. to jump through the wall over here is a little bit lower i'm just going to go mess with that one mm -hmm. instead of trying yep. to get up this one yeah yep. that makes a lot of sense it's a great analogy so you guys, anything else to share? Anything coming up security, like, you know, meetings you're going Secure, to? Security mixer. Yeah, you got a security <laughs> mixer. I mean, what's that like? I mean, is it just well, like... I'm going to one tomorrow. Yeah. Yep. yeah. A bunch of guys standing in corners, not talking to each yeah. other because they don't want to give up too much information. I don't know. Let's find out. <laughs> yeah. Just make sure you turn your phone off before you walk in. They probably have you check it in, frisk <laughs> you, make sure you're not wearing any wires so they could talk about it. So... Well, that's cool. I mean, there's there's a lot to this. Um, we spend obviously Dones, uh, Austin. You spend hours doing stuff, um, which why you're obviously not a very happy person. Because <laughs> no, I'm kidding. You, uh, but yeah. I mean, I, I I love what you guys do. I love seeing the reports. I mean, even for us recently when we went through the FBI evaluation there, and to love to see what your team has done with where we're at. I'm like, that's awesome. You know. To know that we're we're secure like that, we're up to these standards, and we're we're even achieving higher ones at times mm -hmm. is awesome. So I hope we're doing. We're obviously we're doing that for our partners. I hope they appreciate that, and you know, as businesses come on board or even you know sit down and watch this, that they take away something from it. That you know, this is not you know, it's, IT it's is not serious. easy. It is yeah, serious. Yeah, it's, it's a serious business, and you should yeah. If you're not big enough to have a full you know, main a service provider and yeah, yeah, I would just say even then do yeah. your do your due diligence to make sure you're at least covered on the basic. Yeah. Make yeah. sure you find somebody that can help you. Yeah. I, mean, I would so. go as far as to say this is the most important thing True. that is done for a business. I mean, because if, if, if a lot of things in, in security aren't done, I mean, your business could disappear in a matter of a day. Yeah. yeah. Easily. Yeah. You're, you could be out of business yeah. in minutes. All one, your hard work. One ACH payment sent somewhere that Yep. is not a valid address <laughs> or, one, hit, one file, or one entire server encrypted yep. and you're done yep. and then your backups are encrypted you're done you know you're out of business yep. or you got to pay a million dollars for a ransom or something right. yeah right i mean we've seen it unfortunately so well thank you guys yep i'm going to wrap us up here so we can get on to episode 10 which is going to be really exciting um follow us on facebook youtube Instagram uh, and your MySpace page. I know you're keeping up to date. Yep. So it's Tom. I had one new friend after the last one. And then I think he watched an episode and now he's not my friend anymore. Okay. So, so I'm well, just still just Tom. So come back. Check us out next week. You probably for... didn't like your featured like song. On the page. Yeah. Check us out next week for episode 10. We're going to talk about IT budgeting. Save you some cash. Yeah. And then how the BCIO office helps you do that. And you know, and we'll have some other people in here, some new guests. So we get to see some new faces. So thank you guys all for coming. All right. Check us out again. Twitter, Facebook, MySpace, all those great LinkedIn. places.